Welcome to the Spices webinar series, Adding Zest to Life. I'm Alan Forsman and I'm serving with Evelyn Johnson today as co-host for this event. We are co-authors of the book Crescendo, An Ascent to Vital Living. And we helped to launch Crescendo as a pilot project along with Debbie Blue back in 2016. Today, we continue to serve as team leaders for the extending network of Crescendo coaches and resource specialists. Evelyn resides in Chicago, Illinois, and I reside in Sarasota, Florida. We're both committed to Crescendo living in our own personal lives and desire to invite others to make the same commitment. The purpose of this series is to inspire and encourage you as boomers and beyond to pursue Crescendo living and to encourage local church leaders to be intentional in supporting and mobilizing this demographic in a journey of missional discipleship. During this session, we'll focus specifically on staying fresh and green and bearing fruit, which is a key to a crescendo lifestyle. During this past 18 months, we've learned a lot about connecting in ways that don't allow for physical connection. Today is another one of those opportunities. And in order for us to do that and really be helped to do it, we are going to ask that you pay attention to the name that you have on your screen and rename yourself. Jane will put in the uh, chat actually the instructions so that all you have to do is hover over your name. It's a little different if it's an iPad compared to a computer, but just invite you now to make sure it's your name and your location. So when you get into breakout groups, other people will be able to see that and not have to remember exactly what that is. Also, another way for us to connect today is actually through the chat. And that is something also that you can use if you have issues, just do chat with Jane Pomeroy Cho separately. So um, it's a way that we can continue to connect without being physically present with one another. Now, there's going to be glitches. We know that. And as Tom Peters said, we seek not perfection, but we seek excellence. So carry on. Since the beginning of Crescendo as a pilot project in 2016, we have sought to mobilize boomers and beyond as missional disciples. We are deeply grateful for financial support from our covenant family and friends. Making Deep and Disciples, the Brandell Older Adult Ministry Endowment, as well as individual donors. To all, we say thank you. Before praying for our time together, we also are going to thank Jane Chow Pramore and Pam Cobb for Making Deep and Disciples. They are behind the scenes today and throughout this series, providing general and specific support. Please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that we can gather in this way. We thank you for the marvel of technology that allows us to stay connected even during difficult times. We ask that as we gather today that it will be with the intention of being a lifelong learner for the purpose of continuing to grow as disciples so that we might pass on the good news of Jesus to future generations, as well as to those who are in our circle of influence. Please bless this time together, we pray, by your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. 10,000 boomers turned 65 today. And that's been happening each day since 2011 and will continue through 2029. And predictions still remain that in 2035, there will be more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 18. America is aging. Aging is not optional. How we age how we choose to live our life is. 
as Joan Chittister said in her book, The Gift of Years, this season of life is not a non-life, it is a new life. One of those areas is just the reality that with our physical presence here on earth, we know we need to ask the question, what is my purpose, God? How do you want me to live my life? Our lives have been interrupted a great deal in the last 18 months. In fact, some have said for each of us, a little bit of our world has died. There have been many losses. Vacations have been canceled and postponed. Celebrations put on hold or held virtually with no hugs. And people within our sphere of concern have died and the list could go on. Yet amid all those losses, the promises of God remain the same. Promises such as in Psalm 92, 12 through 14, the righteous will flourish. They will bear fruit and stay fresh and green, flourish in the courts of the Lord. Staying fresh and green, bearing fruit, that's crescendo living. Living in a way that there's just that gradual increase until the glorious ending. And we hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Scripture provides us with models. Abraham, Sarah, Naomi, Jethro, Caleb, Zachariah, Elizabeth, only to name a few. These are people who lived with a strong sense of God's purpose and they lived with a hope and trust such that they bared fruit all the days of our life. Staying fresh and green means adding zest to our life, adding enthusiasm, excitement, Ultimately, that is crescendo living. Winston Churchill <laughs> once said, an attitude makes a big difference. Our attitudes toward aging make a big difference. We encourage you to develop the mindset of crescendo as you travel the pathway of vital living. Last summer, I had the opportunity to interview a number of persons that I asked the same question of. What does vital living mean to you? I invite you now to hear Kathleen Greenwich's responses, a multidimensional response. How would you describe vital living? Well, let's see. Vital living. Um, to me, vital living is uh, doing the things that you love, the things that you are passionate about. Um, at this stage of, of our lives when we perhaps are not employed in the eight to five, maybe we are now retired. And there are a lot of things that we weren't able to do when we were working. But now that we don't have that responsibility perhaps, um, so it's time now just to take the leap and uh, start doing the things that you, you've always wanted to do, whatever that is, and to not be afraid to do it. Um, also vital living, I would say, uh, the financial resources, just, you know, not having the, the fear and the angst and the anxiety and worrying about, do I have enough for, you know, food and medication and, you know, the, the, the vital things that we need in life for our everyday living, uh, not being saddled with that burden. Um, so I would say financial resources. And um, spending quality time with family, that's always important. And your friends, you know, there are people that you don't always get a chance to communicate with, but you think about them. 
So now you have a little more time to check in with them. So I think that's a part of, of vital living. And then, of course, your health, soul care, taking the time, being intentional about caring for yourself so that as we live out our life, however long that's going to be, we're healthy to the best of our ability. Staying fresh and green, bearing fruit all the days of our life. That's vital living. Vital living has been actually the focus, the vision of Crescendo since its beginnings. One of the most important dimensions of what's been created is the network of coaches and resource specialists. As you've probably heard during these breakout sessions, there are a variety of ways that we can approach staying fresh and green and bearing fruit. And it's often said that we can do anything, we just can't do everything. And so in Crescendo, we have developed an acrostic spices to guide us in making choices so that there is a holistic process in place for staying fresh and green. Spices are frequently mentioned in scripture. They are that which brings aroma, a fragrance, can enhance flavor, even serve as a soothing balm. All of that is really needed in the aging process. Those who joined us on May 26 heard Alan Forsman share about spices and what each of those letters represents and a little bit about each. We're gonna to listen to it again. And today I just encourage you to actually listen to it from your personal standpoint, as well as from the standpoint of the support that you're providing or receive from your church. The story is told of a grandmother who had some old pieces of cloth. They were really clothes that were no longer being used. She ripped them into strips and then rolled them into a ball. Using a crochet hook, she was able to make some beautiful rugs that then she could distribute to other people. Sometimes we may feel as though the older we get that we outlived our usefulness. Not so. As long as we have life and breath, God has a purpose for us. Crescendo living is defined as continuing to grow into a grand finale. In order for us to practice crescendo living, we have an acrostic called spices. Spices is a framework that will help provide a pathway for us on this journey of purposeful living. The S stands for spiritual. Spirituality is the core of our being. Knowing and loving God, committing our lives to Jesus, having lives of discipleship where we share the good news of Jesus with others and encourage them in their growth of discipleship. It's very important for us to recognize that this is a lifelong journey. Howard Hendricks, a renowned Christian educator has said, no one ever graduates from the school of discipleship. And then of course, we're physical beings. It's important for us to stay active. Nutrition, exercise, rest are all very critical. But evidence is showing that any type of activity is useful. Someone has said, motion is lotion. Beyond that piece, there are such things as lifelong living choices and finances that we need to consider. We're fortunate in the covenant 
to have covenant living communities and resources and covenant trust to help us with some of those important choices. The I is for intellectual. We have a mind. The mind needs exercise as well. And it's important to find ways for us to be able to stimulate those brain cells. Contrary to what some people think, we don't lose brain cells just because we get older. We're capable of continuing to generate them and maintain our sharp mental acuity. So find ways to engage yourself intellectually. There's community. Community is critical for us. In today's world, we're learning more and more about the damaging effects of loneliness and isolation. We are created to be together. The body of Christ is mentioned. And as you look at Acts 2, people did things together, worshiped, prayed, ate together, served together. So it's important for us to keep in mind that find creative ways to maintain social connection. And yes, COVID has been difficult, but let's be creative in connecting while maintaining appropriate physical distancing. E is for emotion. Emotion is sometimes now being described as having emotional intelligence, understanding yourself so that you are more aware of your behavior and how that affects others, how to regulate your behavior and make different choices and circumstances, social awareness, being more aware of others, and then practicing effective interpersonal activity. The last thing that we have to consider is service. This is a very important dimension of the whole spices spectrum. Service is something that God has given to us. Jesus has told us that we should love our neighbor as ourself, acts of love. Henry Drummond, an old Scottish evangelist said, what we can do for God is to be kind to those whom God loves. So these are some things that will help guide a framework for us on our journey of purposeful living. An holistic approach provides us with opportunities to assess where we are in the areas where we want to learn and grow. The SPICES framework allows us that and recognize that these dimensions do not stand alone. They are really fully integrated. For example, intellectual is intertwined with all other dimensions. To grow in any area requires us to learn new information, new ways of doing things. For example, community can be formed as we seek to grow in any of these areas, a grief support group, a small group study, an exercise class, a service project. Research notes for us that when people feel better emotionally, they're able to be more active, which also stimulates brain activity. We're all fits together. All of these dimensions actually relate to service as well. Now there may likely be a primary entry point for each person, and that's what this assessment will help us do. Is it spiritual, physical, intellectual, community, emotional, or service? Where do we need to grow? Where do we believe we need to make progress? Ask yourself, what is my entry point? What issues are you confronting in your life now? Where are the opportunities for you to explore and support your growth? Crescendo type ministries provide us with a framework for coming alongside others and that way creating local ministries that stimulate growth and build relationships. They are a means for mobilizing this demographic for a missional discipleship. Ministries by, with, and for Boomers and Beyond support vital living. Keep asking the question, what current ministries are providing support and encouragement for boomers and beyond 
in each of the dimensions of these spices? What needs to be strengthened? What needs to be stopped? Sometimes we need to stop something in order to start something new. When we embark on or continue on a vitality pathway, there will be personal growth, but we also will be giving glory to God through effective ministry. We have an opportunity to pass on the good news about Jesus by leaving a legacy through word and deed. This demographic is an untapped potential for strengthening the local church and serving the community through the ministries of our local congregation. Now that we've had some experience with looking at the spices, we invite you to hear some comments about personal and community benefits of these spices in three of our churches with Crescendo Tight Ministries. What sparked your interest in being involved with Boomers and Beyond, this age group? Well, I think there's some issues as you kind of start winding up your normal retirement or your normal life and going into retirement that your social circle kind of starts shrinking. You don't have those business contacts as much as you used to. You don't have those work friends. And so I think it's kind of a natural thing to start looking around for other social contacts, particularly uh, with the church and with Christian friends. And for us, because we, it involved a move to a new community, uh, we also had the opportunity to develop another support group because it is necessary to have friends of like hearts. And so we were looking for people that we could be involved with in, in ministry. And it just uh, was like he said, I like hearts. So tell me, have there been any specific things that you would really say have benefited you personally that's happened through track? I think some of the activities have been a help. Uh, some of the Trek activities have involved things for our age group that, you know, whether you like it or not, like estate planning and uh, various talks that people have given that have been very interesting to us, various activities, uh, even as simple as getting on a train and going from Seattle down to Portland. And, uh, you know, the chance to socialize with people and just get input from them. It's been very valuable, I think. And it gives us an opportunity to have fun with people and develop close relationships as we work together. Some of us, because we've worked on some of these projects, have developed a very close relationship. And so I think that's been very beneficial for us. And I will say one of our other objectives was that we wanted to have a group that we could invite neighbors as we became friends with them, that they would be comfortable coming to this kind of group and uh, it would be part of their interest too. But we wanted to be able to be in the group and, and feel comfortable bringing outsiders to that group. So we did, we, we joined. <laughs> so what do you, you know, you mentioned others. What do you sense has been the benefit of Trek to people within the Harbor Covenant Church as well as outside in the community? Well, there have been community activities that we've done, like, uh, you know, gathering up shoes for uh, uh, grade school kids that were having financial difficulty. Uh, there's been community things like that. But I think a big advantage for us is being able to bring outsiders. Uh, you have to be a little comfortable with the group before that happens. I don't think that happens in the first meeting or two. Yeah. But once you become familiar with the group and you're comfortable with that, then that can happen. I, I agree with that. You have to feel that you can bring somebody in and they will be, they, your group will accept them. It won't be a clicky situation where they're going to be viewed as outsiders. So we, it has to be a welcoming group. COVID was a problem for us. Uh, our state shut down. So that kind of delayed things um, and things had to be done on Zoom and that was done with talks. And uh, you know, we have people that are involved in mushrooming and birding, and so they would do a talk, and we would have to be done online. But, um, yeah, there was some it definite worked. advantage. How has 
has your engagement in this ministry benefited you personally? It's okay to start with how it helps us. Yeah, yeah. It has helped me in the sense that it made me more aware of things that I can do myself, that I, that I can intentionally do myself to, to facilitate my own or to, to enhance my own lifestyle. Um, we, we, we talk a lot in our committee meetings about the spices, uh, mind what, they, what they represent. Well, the spiritual, the physical, the intellectual, community, emotional, and, and, and service. Right, right. And, and so I realized that I can do things in my own life to, in, those, in those areas that help me meet, meet my own needs in mm -hmm. the same, same area. So it, it's helped me quite, made me more aware of things, of what's going on. Yeah, so you found that the spices to be a helpful framework. Yes, very good. Right. And what have you observed in other people about the benefits to them and your congregation, of course, and the community at large? One thing, it, it made us more, more aware and more alert to the idea of community, to feel community. Um, that especially came home to roost when, when this COVID-19 hit last year and everybody became isolated. Mm -hmm. We had to make, we had to be intentional about making connections with other people. Right. And, and that worked out well for us. And, and there's a, there's a group of ladies in the church, widows, I am told that Lynn told us at our, one of our meetings that they really got intentional about making connections during that COVID thing to, to make mm -hmm. sure everybody's doing all right. Uh -huh. And that, that, that tells me, it lets everybody else know that we're not alone in this aging process. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, there's a built-in network of sorts that, mm -hmm. that supports us. And I think that becomes really important in, in this day and age. Oh, I had that, that sense of community and being creative even during difficult times about keeping yeah. people connected. Yeah. Sending wow. cards, making phone calls, stuff like that was, was, was really important. That's, that's terrific. Anything else you would like to say about your crescendo experience so far and your hopes for the future? Uh, I, I, I wish I could have had this information when I was pastoring. <laughs> I would have done things a little bit different in our, in, our, in our senior adult ministry. I would have been more expansive, more looking for other areas to, to explore. Tell me, Joanne, how, through your engagement with this ministry, have you benefited personally? I think I've probably become more authentic as a Christian as a result of this. Because I think when you have the opportunity uh, to meet with individuals who are both different and similar to you at the same time, and you are all given a common charge. And it is a building opportunity for the future. I think that's a chance for you to apply everything you know. And for me, it was a chance to put my belief system into different perspectives. I think the end result for me was positive. I think I came away as more grounded and more authentic in what I believe. So what do you see as benefits to others in your congregation, in your community, through some of the things that actually you have engaged in through journeys? I think there's an enormous advantage to the congregation to plan multi-generationally. What I've seen is that as the Journeys Group has gone on, it has put together activities that appeal to more than one generation. And in the course of watching that, I have seen that generations come together and socialize and think together. I think that's a very positive thing for the so, Church. Can you name one or two of those ministries? those experiences? One of the things that I enjoyed most was uh, a winter activity. And 
it was a winter fun night. And during that activity, there was a range of activities for all ages. But one of the things that went on was a little cafe where board games were put on. That meant that every generation could participate in this event. They could participate in it together. So I noticed that both older and younger generation were over there playing board games together while others were outside, while others were in the gym doing other kinds of activities. And it seemed to me that it was probably the best example of what needs to go on in a vibrant church. Yes, as Joanne just said, we invite you to watch these interviews as well as another interview that was done just yesterday with a person from Countryside in McPherson, Kansas. In addition, we want to encourage you to go to the website covchurch.org slash crescendo slash resources and actually download the small group study, which is named Ascent, actually Crescendo and Ascent to Vital Living. It's a six session study that can be adapted either for small groups or for even larger groups, say a Christian formation class. Consider that as a, a good beginning for either a small leadership team or for a larger group. Thirdly, we invite you today to actually in this, the coming, actually coming five days to actually experience getting the book Crescendo and Ascent to Vital Living that was actually developed by Alan Forsman and myself, and you can receive a free Kindle copy. So we just encourage you, you will receive that particular link this afternoon in an email. Um, get one for yourself, share the link with friends. We are the first to acknowledge that the statistics in the book are dated as well as the local church stories because it's four years old. But the other concepts, vital living, spices, ideas for possibilities for activities are all very relevant even after four years. And finally, we just invite you to be a part of our second session next week, which focuses on spiritual, the first S in the spices. Eunice Johnson, crescendo coach from the Pacific Southwest Conference, resident of Turlock, will join me in guiding you through that session, answering the question, how do we cultivate fresh growth spiritually? and activate faith. Have a friend that might be interested in coming, invite them. There's time to register for any of the in upcoming sessions. So encourage others to join us as we more specifically focus in on some of the areas of spices. Thank you for being with us today. And I want to close now in prayer. Almighty and eternal God, we come to you with gratitude. Gratitude for the time that we've been able to share. Gratitude for the technology that allows us to connect in this particular way. Grant us, oh God, wisdom 
personally as we seek to make choices to support our own crescendo living. Grant us wisdom as we seek to gain insights as to ways that we can coalesce this effort in not only the church related to boomers and beyond, but even among the whole of the congregation. Bless all who have participated today. And may we go from here knowing that you are present, always with us. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.